All right, the alien and UFO complex part one, episode zero zero one, the alien and UFO or UAP complex. We are starting off with our first episode with a fucking banger filled with facts, evidence, conspiracies, misinformation, and much, much more. As we try to break down the multitude of information surrounding these intriguing conversations. My name is Moses. Joining us here is Pedro. We are your host for Intellects. There is a disclaimer to be said. We are not scientists, experts in today's topics. We're just two guys having a conversation about something that intrigues us. Now, Pedro, with that out of the way, where should we fucking start? Well, <clears throat> the first question, where did this come from? What arose this? What started this conversation? And... You know, why, where are we at now? Yeah, so, you know, um, there is a tremendous amount of information out there with UFOs, you know, what's real, what's not real. Uh, currently, currently we have this, uh, the, those congressional hearings that just, that just, uh, passed by with, um, you know, Commander Fravor were there, uh, Jeremy Corbell were there. Uh, they briefed that guy. Ryan Graves. Ryan Graves, I think. Yeah, they they uh they briefed, uh, you, you know they were there in the briefings, so it's it's kind of one of those fucking voodoo topics of uh you, you know you you're into UFOs this and that, but all this stuff really you know started coming up with the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh that's where ufo lore starts uh which that was in that was in 1945 when those bombs were dropped and ever since then everything spiked that's when we started having more ufo sightings that's where people started calling uh you know calling departments that they were seeing things in the in the air and which leads us to 1947 just very shortly after a couple years after the bombs were dropped uh, in Roswell, New Mexico, that's that was the very first, or at least that was one of the very first incidents that was on a nation on a, on a nationwide scale that these crafts these crafts crashed. Uh, there was a, a tremendous about of a tremendous amount of witnesses. The military was involved in in the cover up stories. Uh, news outlets were involved in cover up stories, uh, and that's our first uh our, that's kind of like our first stamp of 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 a timeline of of UFOs conspiracies if you will do you think uh, that's a coincidence though that's a thing cuz everyone i mean the people that we kind of you know know they kind of always bring that up and they kind of or they correlate those two timelines but do you think that's a, a conspiracy or do you think it's just a, or not conspiracy, a coincidence? Or do you think it's, you know, so a thousand percent it is not a conspiracy theories. UFOs are not a conspiracy theories. A thousand percent. Uh, f first of all, the Pentagon now recognizes uh, that UFOs are real and that m whether we have whether our the U.S. involvement is a fact or or it, they're just objects they're just foreign objects that that's another story but a thousand percent they're not conspiracies and a thousand percent i don't think it's a coincidence yeah I, it, it, you can't it's crazy to think that it's a coincidence because i don't know if you are some intelligent life and then you figure out nukes you're like oh shit He's, you know, I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just kind of talking. No, ex exactly. And, and again, it's, I, I don't think it's a, co it's a coincidence or conspiracies because, uh, like this, uh, in 1947, uh, with the contact in, in Roswell. These... Yeah. Yeah. Bring us, bring us to Roswell. What if people, for people that don't know about Roswell, what are the, what's the information? What's the facts? What's the, you know, kind of what we know and what kind of was covered up? You know stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, a very small overbrief. So there was. Uh, so uh, we're in we're in Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, there's uh, a series of of storms that are that are happening. Um, there is people 
and there's people that that are starting to see things in in the skies uh they're actually contacting the sheriff departments they're 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 calling the the sheriff's department saying that hey there's objects in our skies uh can you guys come check this out uh the sheriff departments they're like oh, what the fuck is up with these people it, you know they're just on some shit and then shortly after these these calls there's uh there's severe storms in Roswell New Mexico and uh, again, uh, there's objects in the skies, and one of these objects ends up crashing at a, at, a, at a farmer's land. And this is where we have kind of our first contact with, uh, with, with those uh, foreign uh, space vehicles. And um, a farmer by the name of Mac Brazel is the one that makes contact with a debris field of unknown origin. Uh, he ends up taking the debris to show a sheriff um, to see kind of what's going on and what the contents of the of these debris are are like are, are metal or like foils so you can crumple them and mess and you know manipulate the the metal but as you, soon as you let go it comes back it, it, to its original shape. Oh shit! Uh, and to this <clears throat> day, actually, uh, a quick note on that: to this day, actually, we have uh, certain pieces of these metals that people have gone out and found we don't we have nothing like it we can't identify what type of metal this is we can't identify what these materials are made out of so it's pretty it's it's pretty cool to kind of like see that you know maybe there's some truth to this story because in this story there's also a cover-up that happens as well um the the Mac Bra the farmer Mac Brazel uh, ends up taking to this to the sheriff. The sheriff uh, contacts um, uh, federal con authorities. Yeah, contacts federal authorities, and then the Air Force comes in. The Air Force comes in, and they take uh, they take action of the situation. They start cleaning up. They start investigating what's going on, and they release a statement to the press that they found a UFO. Well, that was the first one, wasn't it? I think that I remember. Yeah, yeah, the uh, yeah, it, correct. It was, and the the Air Force at this time, they're like, "Hey, we we found a UFO, and we're investigating what happened now." And then this is when everything goes nationwide. Everybody all over the United States started uh, getting intrigued about this stuff. They're like, "What the fuck? We found a fucking UFO." The military said that we found a UFO, and then shortly after. They switch their stories. They're like, nope, it's just a weather balloon, blah 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 blah, mm. and uh, and and people are asking questions all over the place. Even uh, the farmer Mac Brazel changed his stories as well. Oh, saying, did he? Yeah, did he? changed so his stories as well. Something there's something behind there. Fuck yeah. So with the, I guess let's go back to the the thing that he found that Max Brazel found. The, is there evidence? Is there like any videos? Is there, uh you know can we if someone was to just look up you know uh, i don't know retractable metal can we see that or is that is that hidden sorry uh so no so no so mac, mac brazel uh you know gets in contact with the sheriff the sheriff gets some of that debris to take it to the department and to show it to the the air force i believe this information is is, is a, little, a little weird it might not be accurate but the sheriff actually stops by at his house to show his his family and stuff like that, to because it's very cool foreign material. Um, so he actually stops by. But as far as we know, no, we do not have any actual photos or evidence, mm. um, of this debris fields. What we do have, however, is just um, is uh, that documented? Sorry, is that documented? Yes, the, yes. All that, all this, you know. Yeah, all yep. this stuff. Yeah, it's it's all documented. Um, so again, we don't have any evidence about the foreign material that was found and what they were talking about, but we do have witness evidence that is a little sketchy. You know, it can't really be trusted. Uh, it's pretty much he said, she said situations. Oh, okay. okay. But we do have uh, kind of like the press release of of how they try to cover it up because, as I said, the military said. Uh, we found a UFO, and then next thing you know, we didn't. Hmm. And next thing you know, we, we fucking we we didn't. They tried covering it up. 
which this is what they shown. They oh yeah they they okay. they ended up changing their huh. story. They ended up changing their story that it was just a weather balloon, weather balloon. and there there was just foils and sticks. And this was actually it. And they later later they said that this was a cover up. Uh, this was actually staged at the time, and they brought press in to be like, "Oh no, it wasn't a UFO. It was just a weather balloon." Here is our evidence. You oh, know. so that is probably not the actual evidence. That's probably just the this, evidence that they wanted to correct. Show. Correct. This is the cover up story here. You they, think it actually was a cover up though, or could it actually <clears throat> been a weather balloon? So we'll get into that later. Save that question for later because that is a very uh, important topic that you just mentioned. We'll save it for later. However, for now, this is what they showed to the press. The press ended up releasing an, and something else. Oh, no, it's it was just a weather balloon. And bam. Well, actually, what is a weather balloon? <clears throat> so weather is just a big it's ass. Just, it's, just, a, it's just literally that. A big ass weather balloon that it tracks. For the people that don't know, you know. Yeah, it just it's just a big ass weather balloon that helps you track, uh, you know, weather, uh, as well as uh, sometimes they're used for uh, for signals, you know. For, okay. Just okay. just it's just it's kind of like okay. No, it's it's, it's a different. It was a, just a, a tech a different type type of technology. Yeah, that, we still use time. Yeah, we still use them today okay. too. We still use them today too. Okay. okay. Um, fucking hint like the fucking Chinese. They just sent weather balloons. <laughs> yeah. Over yeah. here with satellites on that. Like that type of thing yeah so they're still they're still being used today um however this was a story um and uh the the farmer mac brazel he ended up changing his story to fit this narrative as well wow. as well okay which yeah it's kind of weird a thousand percent it's very weird it's very weird yeah so after that happened fuck where were we at? i lost topic we were the weather balloon and then max brazel and then what the cover up stories oh yeah the cover up stories <clears throat> um so i guess back to the your original question is it a conspiracy a thousand percent no is it a coincidence again i don't I, I there's nothing that can say it's really a coincidence when you have the army coming in changing their story yeah, that is uh weird. sending it out now we know now but i guess back to your question now we know that this was a cover up the the army uh or the 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 American military ended up uh, coming out with a statement saying that everything was a cover up. Uh, uh, yeah. When, when when was that? Uh, let me see if I can find some information on that. But yeah, but they ended up coming out saying that it was uh, in in nineteen fifty three. They said that it was because of Operation High Jump was the reason that they covered this up so th this story came out then you know a couple years later 1953 they said oh that shit was a fucking cover-up because of operation high jump which was some yeah. secret okay. uh okay. some secret you know military operations that okay. they, they don't want the the public knowing so that's why they covered that up so they actually admitted <laughs> to it like not even 10 years that you know yeah after they, that yeah they did and but the bad thing about this cover-up was that uh, it, they lost the the story lost credibility when they came out with this uh, press saying that it was just sticks and and foil mm. and foil. However, but there was there, two. I was gonna say there was two Roswells. Roswell. What? Yes, there was two Roswells. Yeah, there was uh, another crash site where they actually found uh, the same thing. They found another crashed UFO. Uh, I think it was even more intact, but they also found beings, beings. in this UFO. Yeah. And it's fucking crazy, dude. <clears throat> this one, however, was not known. I was going to say, I was like, I only know. Well, actually, to be honest, the Roswell, it's weird that the Roswell, I really don't know much about the Roswell. I haven't done some investigation in that, but... Yeah, I did not know that there was two crash sites. Yeah, so the first crash site in Roswell was right here. This was the first one. This was the one that everybody knows about. And everything was centralized around this story. And then the other one was a couple miles down the other way over here. I think it says it's 170 
five miles northwest of Roswell. <clears throat> this one is where there was another crash. There was beings as well um, on both on both sites. Actually, no, this one I believe was the one that they sent in um, aircraft to pick up. They transported the the retrievables in two different airplanes. Um, there was beings supposedly that were found in this one as well. And the thing is that there's witnesses. That's all that stuff. Yeah, the, the the thing is that there's witnesses for both of these stories, and there were on on the second cra uh, crash site there there was a uh, hostility between the military and the and the and the witnesses that were that were there on the ground too. Oh really? But this is the one that not a lot of people know about. Which was is it more in the <clears throat> desert region? I guess I don't know not, New Mexico that much. Not necessarily. <clears throat> I actually don't I actually don't either. I, I don't know about okay. the region either. Okay. However, it's not known about because of this first crash site. So uh, kind of okay. Yeah, so okay. like okay. like they're yep. they're they're putting up a front, like the military is putting up a front and uh j just to keep the bigger secret at bay. For sure. And there was witnesses for both sides. There was, yes. Do we know what those witnesses say? Uh, it's do we just, know who they were, or it was just the same story? Like, do it, they all correlate, you know, to to what the story is about? Yeah, it's it's more of the same. I mean, if you want to look at it from a neutral point of view, because that's it, you know, I have to look at it from a neutral point of view, and then it's just like, I mean, if I saw that, there's no way in hell I'm just gonna like change the narrative. Like, even if I don't know, man, even if they pay me so much fucking money, I don't understand. Like, I, I it's something you just can't believe if you just saw that you're like what the fuck yeah <laughs> um, like yeah the thing is if you want to look at it from a neutral point of view you know can it be a cover-up conspiracy this and that yes there is witnesses on the ground but they're all sketchy witnesses like if you want a reliable source unfortunately the only reliable source that we have to that that we have to tell that roswell happened and that ufos were present and beings were present were retrieved from this ufo the only solid pieces of information that we have is the fact that the military was there, that the military was working ah, on something. Yeah, for sure. That the military told civilians to get the fuck out of here, that we're working on something secret, that they brought two um, transport, two air transportations to retrieve all this debris, uh, that it was sent somewhere unknown. Unfortunately, that is 100% concrete evidence so was there aliens retrieved was there ufos retrieved that part is what we don't know that part is what we don't we know there's foreign materials so that implements that there is something that we don't that we can't track that there's something that we don't know what the fuck it is that was retrieved at these sites so you know it's 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 just up to you know me and you it's up to the people to the, to make their own conclusions well for sure but i just don't like that because i don't know if you kind of you know in public you kind of just can't really talk about ufos because then you're you know you're kind of known as a weird you know sketchy person which i don't understand because it's like if you actually think about the whole universe just actually just in our own galaxy how much billions of stars there is you're like i don't know it it's the math doesn't add up to us just being by ourselves, uh, you know, but okay. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. There's a lot of factors that people don't believe in. It could go down to just not believing it or being very religious, too. Yeah. So. I, I, and then also, uh, let's go back to that second site because I don't know nothing about it. And do we have any more information on that on what happened on that second site or where were the beans or, you know? Uh, so again, this was the site that was better taken care of. Um, oh, so that was like okay, we already went through this process on this site, so let's you know be, stay ahead of the game. Yeah, it, yeah, let's stay ahead of the game. So we don't know um, much about it. No, no, not really. Again, we only know that because of witnesses and because of you know the military logs, uh, you know that were that were later figured out with. Um, but the only thing that we really know about it is again that there were. Uh, there was another crash site with a craft. There was four pilots retrieved from that. Of four? Yeah, there, there, yeah, there like, was 
there's four beings that in were, the second sight only or in the in i believe or, in, or together no i believe it was in the second sight in the first sight it was only debris it was only debris fields maybe there was something else but for the most part it was just a debris field a, de- a debris field so i don't know do we know the size do we know how they look like do we know any evidence is that where that uh footage and we'll we'll put it up after but is that where that footage of that kind of like weird being with that old old footage of that alien with those black eyes is that is that where that footage emerges from or no is that that's a whole different thing and yeah i know i know what you're talking about that footage i believe was fake okay okay yeah because yeah, yeah, i was gonna say i was like i swear there was some you know implications that you know it was fake or not but i was just wondering if that was yeah no i know? believe yeah i believe that footage was actually fake um however yeah however no this this site i you know what i believe kind of happened because I, I think it's 75 miles away approximately 100 75 miles away from roswell or 175 miles i'm not sure i think what could have happened is you know uh ufo is crashing it spits out some debris from oh. the crash and then it lands ah. at this second site and then this is where you know the fatalities it happen makes sense. i think that's what happened um but yeah there was there was four there was four crafts again there was a little little press about this however you know military personnel that later retired that leaked some information um they say that they were covering something up and that they seen, you know, approximately four feet tall uh, beings um, in skin tight uh, jumpsuits and they were all deceased. So what we can what we can conclude from this is that the first sight was basically just a debris and then the second sight was where the actual, you know, I believe so. OK, 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 so I guess. I don't know. It's just kind of weird when you are that intelligent life. Let's just say, for example, like you would think that you wouldn't crash. You know, that's only for like us humans, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I I don't know. And and maybe obviously we don't know these answers and these answers are very, very fascinating. And this kind of drives us to just, you know, kind of wonder about these things. But it's just weird, you know? Yeah, You're so uh, intelligent, but you still crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, have you heard of the Kardashev or the Kardashev scale? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I don't know uh, uh, primarily what it is, but it, the different types of civilizations. Correct, correct. And kind of like you know, we're not even to the uh, type one. Yeah, I believe we're not even at zero. Oh yeah, we're not even at zero, like, and then we're, we're like point. Mitchell Kaku, Mitchell Kaku explains it so fucking well, and I'm yeah. just like, dang. So then. So he gives it the first, the Kardashev scale. I think if if I remember right, we're not even at zero, but then it's type one, and then that harnesses the energy and all the resources from the planet, right? Or it's type one. Is that where we can control kind of weather and all this yeah, stuff? Yeah, correct. And then type two, type two, we harness the energy from the star, from our star, which is the sun. Yeah, from our solar from, system. From our solar system. Yeah. And then what's three? Three is we harness the Inter- power of- Intergalactical kind of- uh no two uh, three i believe is we harness the power of the power of our galaxy and four is we harness the power of our universe so we can start to dabble with black holes we can create them we can do all this type of stuff okay so i'll put up the i know there's a graph out there but we'll, i'll put it up yeah so regarding that kardashev scale you think you know we're only like 0.7 we're something something along those lines these beings if wherever they come from they have technology far superior than us now we 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 make mis- we have perfected cars we have perfected airplanes we have perfected uh, you know for the most part we have perfected transportation through sea air and ground travel so what what do we do we get in car crashes all the time we're very capable human beings we get in car crashes all the time we get have airplane crashes all the time. We have faulty uh, mechanic systems all the time. So what's to say that these intelligent beings on a different, you know, on you know, on a higher number on that scale, what's to say that they can't make mistakes either? For sure. At the 100%. end of the day, at the end of the day, we're just 
beings capable of mistakes for sure for sure so, and i feel like i feel like we have the under the understatement where we think that just because we make mistakes intelligent life won't exactly and that's very i think wrong for you know, yeah perception. um not only that but you're foreign you're a foreign being coming from somewhere else this is a, this is a strange planet to you you don't you have no idea how the weather is here you have no idea you know how things are so you're you're when have you gone into something unknown you know ex expecting you know for expecting, things to be the yeah, same yeah yeah i mean i haven't really traveled you know into some i don't know not controlled areas kind of like the amazon forest or something or you know the sahara desert or just stuff like that where I don't know. I would not know how to know, how, you know, how to survive. Yeah, exactly. So, so I understand. I, I, so I guess I'll answer that with a counter question, which is that, which is, you know, for sure. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. Um, and it's not like these crashes are happening all the time. You get me, but it can be one of those things. Like maybe these beings are, maybe these beings are visiting us very often and, or watching us. Yeah. Or, or watching us. Who knows? But, who knows? And all and also we don't know where they come from. So honestly, they can even be here on Earth. <laughs> that's yeah. another. That's another place. You get into those hollow Earth theories. Oh, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, a thousand percent. Um, but back to Roswell. Um, something definitely happened. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that we'll never know. You know, the military was present. Witnesses were present. However, the, all the original witnesses, I believe, are all dead. Um, and the military files about the case were also lost or destroyed as well. What? Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, so it's... Oh, one of those. It's, it, that is so repetitive where we're almost just like, oh, yeah, it was, it was, it was real. Yeah. Just because of that. Like, I don't know. I don't know how you just lose files. I don't know. How, it's kind of like... Traveling to the moon. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. I literally don't want to get into that. But like, we've lost how to go to the moon. What? Okay. You know, I just believe that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just, something that important, we're just going to lose or what? whatever the NASA claims. Yeah. It's, but that's for another pod though. Yeah. <laughs> that's that, for 100% yep, for let's go pod. ahead and leave that for another podcast. That's a, another conversation that oh, 100%, all entirely 100%. on itself, whether that even happened or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a situation that happens all too often of, you know, it's, and the, the, pro the thing is why that's so successful though, why that keeps on coming up is because we, the people don't want to get more information about it. That's why, oh, you know what? It's lost, blah, blah, blah. You know, some uprising happens. Oh, what the fuck? How do you lose all this stuff? And then it dies down and then it gets swept under the rug and then it repeats itself with another you know another topic another situation that happened i mean i don't know us i guess we're not too intrigued into it or we just want uh, i don't know just there's a lot of things that you kind of just wonder is this just cover-ups to just forget about you know yeah you know it's, it's literally you know september 15th 2023 we know a lot of things that's happening around and i don't know sometimes you just think that some things are made to cover up other things yeah so or like, like, literally exactly like Roswell, you know. There was a two sites. One was more prominent. There was news came in, cover ups, blah blah. It was, it was a conundrum, for sure. But so, let's go in the conversation. Or you know what? I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait for this for this uh, for this kind of question at the end. So what's after Roswell? What is the more I guess more concrete evidence one after Rod after Roswell. Um, you know, concrete evidence. You know, we kind of have quite a bit of it. You know, we have radars and all this stuff. Um, I would say that the next biggest one, however, was probably uh, the contact at at the aerial school in Zimbabwe. Ooh, Which, Zimbabwe. Yeah, Rua Zimbabwe, 1994. The story goes is actually something very similar to Roswell. Uh, prior before, uh, people were calling, hey, you know what? 
uh, reports actually there was reports of strange things in the skies um nothing much ended up, ended up happening uh in the surrounding days around where these reports were happening um there's a school in rural Zimbabwe that a UFO sub- allegedly landed at the school and made contact with kids the crazy part about this story is that all these witnesses all these kids tell the same story you know 30 years later and they all tell the same story they all had drawings of them too they were all scared uh, all these kids were scared there's uh topics that uh there's that these beings made contact with them the kids seen these beings again again four foot uh big head eyes uh the how a gray would lurk what would look do you know what a you know what uh well that's that that's what i was gonna get to but at the end mm-hmm. after we you know kind of just talk about what we want to talk about mm-hmm. what different types you know if is there different types that we've c- recovered you know stuff like that so i kind of just wanted to wait that for for the end all right yeah just talk about you know mm-hmm. yeah so again these kids uh at aerial school were playing at recess uh then a craft lands outside the school catching the kids attention now the the craft lands beings come out the kids were obviously like what the heck's going on they get closer to the fence line and two beings come out of the craft and they make contact with the kids telepathically they, yeah i uh i did i i did some little investigation on this one yeah the, it's the, crazy yeah they it's make, super fucking crazy man it's like all right i don't know actually on netflix it just came out. It's called on Netflix. It's uh, it called Encounters, and it's the second episode. I think it's the second episode. Yeah, it's a hundred percent the second episode, and they actually they're actually older now. They're literally older. How you explain it, and they're kind of you know explaining what they actually saw, what they what they felt, and then it also shows the footage way before when they were young. You know, when they were young, and uh, what's that one guy? I don't know his name. That guy that came and interviewed. Do you know the guy that interviewed those little kids? Do you know his name? Doctor John Mack. It might be. I I don't. I honestly don't know. But honest. But uh, anywho, uh, they came and or he came and talked to all of them, and they all had exactly the same story. But then, on the contrary, from what you know, from what I've known, is that there's this one guy, only one guy, that he goes and he's like, "No, these kids are crazy." He's like, "These kids are crazy." These kids are uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, I was the one. I felt like he kind of just had a narrative to himself. He wanted to, like, be the, you know, the other guy. Because I swear, because he he's literally <laughs> like, these kids are dumb. I It was me that said that uh, there was a rock or I it was a big, shiny rock. Like, I, we we can all, and they're all like, this is not, it wasn't a rock. We know what a rock look like. It looks like, you know. That guy's so, fucking bot, bro. <laughs> no, he, I mean. I like that they kind of showed different sides of it, to be honest with you. But I, I, if he had, like, some, I don't know, credibility to it, it it, it would, it, I don't know. He sounded, honestly, like, maybe it's just because I want to believe it. Honestly, it could be that. But, like, everyone else, everyone else literally, you know, were like, yeah, we saw this, we saw this and that. And then he talked to me. He talked about, can we, do you know what those little kids were saying that the, that the extraterrestrial being was talking to them about? Yeah, uh, well, the reports are that, um, again, it was all te- uh, te- telepathically. The kids, when they were receiving this information from these foreign beings, uh, they were kind of like in paralysis. They couldn't move. They they could communicate with them. They were being drawn in telepathically. And these messages were of uh, were of a of some some kind of like of a prophecy of uh, a warning towards a uh, World War Three. A warning towards destruction, a warning towards uh, implementing that peace needs to be uh, implemented, Im- implemented and preserved. And yeah. uh, I don't. Did you ever say what year was this? Yes, this was in 1994 19, when the incident. 1994. Happened. Yeah, 1994. 94, okay. Yeah, okay. kind of fairly recent. You know, a couple, yeah. mm, a couple years. Uh, yeah. Twenty plus, twenty plus years. So it's something fairly, re- fairly recent as well. Um. Yeah, so after this, ha- there was actually, there was 62 students that that witnessed this. Uh, I don't know if they all had contact with them, 
but there was 62 students. Uh, some of them actually never ended up going back to the school. After this incident uh, happened, they were so scared that they never returned to for their curriculum. They never returned back to school. Um, others were gone for a few days. Um, yeah, that'd be that'd be crazy. Yes. Well, see, that's that's another thing. Like, if you, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I'm not around kids too much, but I feel like when you, they they just don't lie, you know. They don't like they they they're just so you know they're so innocent where they oh you know and they they just don't lie about things and this guy was claiming that they lied, this guy literally was claiming that they were lying that they're liars and I don't know just kind of I don't know he was just I yeah know. you know it's curious it's definitely one of those things that you know whatever your environment is the kid will absorb. So I can see it happening where the kid doesn't have a good environment, maybe back home, and they make things up. I, I can't see that happening. Yeah. Can I see it happening 62 times? Yeah. Is see, another that's question. Thing. That's, that's the thing. Like, there was so many of them where it's like, I don't know, but then also you, you think about, you think about, all right, did, were they just going with the story? Because, I mean... I remember being a kid and, you know, I don't know. Just, yeah, FOMO, fear of missing yeah, you out. Know, you know, yeah. you know, oh, yeah, yeah, it did happen. It did happen, but it <laughs> didn't happen. So that's another So that's another thing where, you know, you think about, I don't know. The, it's just, it's the, just crazy. The counter to that would be that these kids were interviewed separately, one by one by one by ah, one. They all had ah. similar stories. They all had similar stories. They all had similar messages from these foreign beings is the thing. Now, uh, now some, now some guy did. There, there was reports that some guy that was report that was uh, interviewing them that he was manipulating the conversation. Um, again, maybe that was, maybe that can be. Was it like, that guy that we're talking about? I don't believe so. Okay, because I know that the guy that interviewed them, uh, he, he was a documentary filmmaker. I think. Don't quote me on this. Yeah, uh, I believe I believe he was. Yeah, but then he was some professor or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I th you know I think it is Dr. John Mack. He was oh, a, it might, it might, it, yeah, it he, might be him. He, he was a UFO. He was a UFO researcher. Yes, 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 yes. And yes, yes. Uh, then it is him. Then it is him. Yeah, which that fucking guy ended up getting clapped. What? Yeah, he ended up getting clapped. He ended up mysteriously <laughs> dying. Yeah, he ended up mysteriously dying. I, I don't after, know. After after pushing this after pushing this Maybe story. Or, yeah, or he was he was pushing this story. Uh, obviously, he was a uh, he was a big time UFO researcher. He's like he found out about this is probably like some concrete stuff for him. Yeah, he he's found, never heard about this. Yeah, he found out about Zimbabwe. He was you know he was pushing this out to the public, and then I think he was going to uh, like this uh, kind of like a press conference type of situation to bring awareness to this to this particular story, and he he apparently had valuable information. Um, regarding this situation and he mysteriously died and he ended, he never ended up showing up so we never ended up knowing so, what he what information he had so does it um do we know how he died or what happened to him i guess or how they portrayed him as dying uh you know i can't remember i can't remember uh i'll look it up real quick though i think it was something along the lines of like I don't know, he died of suicide or some stupid shit like that. Oh, that suicide thing? But it's fucking crazy, though. It's all, it's all still fucking crazy, though. All right, yeah. Oh, it's kind of like oh, my boy. It's kind of yes, like, it's dude, I fucking remember. It's kind of like my uh, like my boy. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay. Okay, I fucking remember now. All right, I fucking quick Googled it, and I kind of, the story is coming back to me. Um. So, yeah, Dr. John Mack was a UFO researcher that mysteriously died in London. Now, the fucking crazy part about it is Dr. John E. Mack, there was more... E Max that died that day. That day what? that day like four four people with the same name died on that night. And he was one of them. Like almost like if they were like, fuck, you know, we is it know. this guy? Is it that guy? Let's just fucking clap him off. I think I, I think that's where we're going to more conspiracy on that end though. Well, but it But I mean because so, like cause if you think about it, if you think about it, all right, I, you know, how many of our names are out there? And let's like, say we, I don't know, it kind of does sound crazy, huh? Like, let's just say your page was Amora's. 
how many of them just die, you know? Just yeah. die all on one. I mean, I don't know. I guess yeah. I made that I feel like that's looking for something that you want to find though. You know? You know, may maybe, may you know, may, you know, the the United Kingdom is a is a big place. There's a lot of Emacs, I guess, running around and I guess they all have <laughs> mysterious deaths and I guess, you know, Dr. Mac, you know, he ended up getting ran out. He actually ended up getting uh, struck and killed by a car in London. Oh. And uh the the guy that was operating the vehicle was under the influence of alcohol. It's like our boy Carl Wolf. <laughs> you know, you know, these fucking things are fucking crazy, dude. You know, it's I can definitely see why this conspiracy name is thrown out a lot because of what we're talking about right now. Yeah. I don't know. I just I it, it sucks that now it's just portrayed as that, you know? Yeah, it without does. having an open mind in in, in everything. You know, you kind of have a, you have to have an open mind in a lot of things. You know, you you can't just close out everybody or everybody's beliefs because, you know, let's let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. I think I think that freedom of speech shit isn't, you know, implemented that much, you know. It's like, "Oh, yeah. shut up." Shut up. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, but like, you know. Yeah, but uh, bring us back to the contact at the aerial school. Um, yeah, Dr. John Mack was a UFO researcher. He was also a psychiatrist. That's how he was. He's a doctor uh, okay. in the psychiatry field. Okay. Uh, so he was, he was toned to understand these kids and to read these kids. Are they really lying ah. and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. um, so he was a credible person for this story. Um so yes, uh, 62, 62 kids. Uh, again, some of them never ended up coming back to the school. Um, and then once this was released to the press, again, it broke out uh, worldwide, worldwide mm -hmm. news. Um, uh, uh, also skeptics and stuff like that. People were saying that there were things burning up in the atmosphere that, you know, these kids are just lying and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it, it's just kind of crazy. They, the kids did end up drawing draw uh ended up drawing their things and i will show you, you like, pull one up? i think uh even like i said in encounters in encounters they might show all this stuff but if if you guys want to know about that yeah one. Th and there's ah there might be another one about it about Bob. i mean i know there's a i've watched a bunch of videos on it so of the interviews too you know yeah, these right here, what I'm pulling up, they're all their original drawings from the kids from that day. Uh, and these drawings were drawn in front of the psychiatrist with no other kids around? Yes. Actually, you know what? I withdraw that answer. I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Is is a better question. However, these kids were asked to draw and to you know just to kind of show these guys mm -hmm. what what the fuck was going on and, and i will put all those photos around and this is what came out this is what came out so again uh, back to the kind of what these beings are with roswell and then zimbabwe this is kind of what a gray is a gray is the name that the community has given them i guess <laughs> um which is your stereotypical look of a uh, alien you know, short, four or approximately around four feet, uh, skinny, big as head, big eyes. <laughs> and and uh, these kids ended up drawing the grays without, you know. And they were, were these tall or no, what did they describe them? Short. They described them as short, four feet, short, approximately yeah. the same size as uh, the kids, uh, okay. which is also curious in itself. You know, these foreign beings coming from somewhere else. Do did they think that these kids were adults? Uh huh. Did, you know, because they're the same oh. size and stuff like that. You know, it's it, no way they could have because they talked to them telepathically, supposedly. You know. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, like, okay, okay. Yeah, like, yeah. But this is what they came out. Um, again, skeptics would be like, you know, some these crafts don't look the same. Oh my god! I mean, they're kids drawing. You know, like I remember being a pretty good little drawer, and then other people, hey, draw face. You know. Yeah. It's. It, you can't. Nah, yeah, you can't go off of that. W one thing though, but but why don't they ask? Well, why are they? They at least drew it. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, it's very 
it's it's incredible. You, you give me it's an incredible story. It's a massive story. Sixty two kids. Um, they seen him. They had telepathically encounters with these beings. They drew them. Um, it's incredible. Let's just say this story is one hundred percent true. It's incredible, right there. You know, that's a UFO. Those are beings from another planet somewhere in the galaxy. Maybe they're from fucking Hollow Earth. I don't know. <laughs> uh, actually, a little hint in there. Maybe uh, make a podcast about that Hollow yeah, Hollow Earth theory. Right. But just, it, it, but it's an incredible story. Like that could be a fucking alien that a kid seen, multiple kids seen, and you know maybe it's just been covering up. But that's crazy. One thing is true though, the kids did see something. They did the kids did see something. Thirty something years later, twenty something years later, they were interviewed again. They had the same story. Yeah, and some I mean, of these, if, if if you think about it, if you made up that story, I don't know. If I made something up right now, in ten years, I'd probably forget about it. Yeah, and I, you know, and if unless I really, really, really know that this happened or this, you know, I there there won't be no way of, I guess, lying about it. You know, like I don't know. I, I, I mean, that's that's a you're, you're some, a good liar. <laughs> some you're a good liar. Some of these kids, as they continue to grow up, they never talked about this ever again. They never mm. t they never spoke to their spouses about it. Uh, they never brought it up again until they were re-interviewed as adults, which is another of those things. Like if, if you're gonna come, if you're gonna make something up, why would you never tell about it even to your closest partner, your your spouse? Because you're gonna be called crazy. It, maybe, but maybe that can that helps the argument of this being a factual event that actually happened as these kids describe it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But again, it's one of those things that there is evidence and there is, witnesses. I guess, counter evidence. There is witnesses. It's one of those things that you have to make up your own story. However, with something like this, however, with something like this, it's too big of a scale of an event to brush it under the rug i think i think going back to roswell i think there is something sketchy about it something happened we don't know i think what happened in zimbabwe is more on the factual side than not mm -hmm. there is just too big of a think, scale what is what do you think about why they keep this under the rug you know why is it just because people i mean people can freak out too you know People literally can freak out about anything, you know, so just anything. And, you know, people sometimes don't do their own research, so they just, like, don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, they, they depend too much on other entities or authorities to, to portray something for them. So it's like maybe it could be that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe so we'll go crazy. I don't know. Like, I mean, for me, I, I think this shit is cool. I'd be like, holy fuck. I'd be sitting there like, holy shit. But, like, other people are like, you know. Yeah, I would too. So there is this thing, again, in UFO lore on why it's kept secret from the public. There was this broadcasting when TVs weren't, weren't a thing. They were just checking out broadcasting to see if they could broadcast to the world. Um, it was just this new technology that was being implemented when. I actually don't know when, um, but it's it's a very prominent story. You, we could look it up real quick too. But there was this broadcasting that they wanted to, see how far and if they could broadcast to the entire United States. And what they used to broadcast was a story, was it was a story of, you know, of, of actually being taken over by aliens is a, is a man. What was the story? Was it the war of worlds? I can't remember. Long story short, the story was about, uh, you know, civilization being taken over, being at war with aliens. Mm -hmm. And out of all the fucking stories to broadcast, they chose this one. And they broadcasted the signal. Everybody tuned in. Everybody was listening to the radio. They listened to the story. They thought it was true. They thought it was actually real. And everybody was fucking freaking out. And it caused uh, mass panics. Everybody freaked out. And this is supposedly why all this information is being hidden. Something ended up coming up... Um, as people started uh, going back and di diving into this, that it was actually probably um, 
it, it wasn't as a big of a deal as what they portrayed it to be. Okay. So it's so there's that on why maybe all this information is hidden. There's that. Um, there is also on the front of us being tribal, tribal, tribal people. You know, we want to have all the information. We want to have all the technology to use it. Sadly, against you know other nations and other stuff for like sure, that. Sure. Um, I just yeah, man. How what time? You know, at what point do you just look yeah. at reality and? Yeah, I don't know. Stop being so, you know, but tribal. This is where, you know, these conspiracies come from is the government. What is the government hiding? Why is it hiding this? You know, you know, I I can see why conspiracies are so fun to dive into and such a massive fucking rabbit hole because of this very reason as to so much secrets in the air. You know, it, the people have to come up with with some sort of a, a response. Narr- yeah. uh, unfortunately, that narrative sometimes is a bunch of fucking it's wacky. Yeah, it's, it's wacky. wacky. I've I've dove into a lot of those, and I'm like, geez, bro, we have a lot of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've I've literally been like, oh my, what am I looking at? I know. I'm, 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 I'm almost I'm almost starting to believe this. You know, like yeah. oh shit, there's so much of this. Uh, I I might believe it. So, you know, that's that's crazy. Yeah, but so uh, I guess do we have more after 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 Zimbabwe? What is you know what's next? What what's the most recent? Obviously, we know you know the gimbal video. We know. Yeah. So yeah, again, those are again recent stuff. The the gimbal, the triangle figures that was released by the Pentagon actually. Um. But the next big massive story like like the one that like the ones that we're talking about is again very recently too uh after the zimbabwe incident happened in 1996 uh there was the ufo sightings and contact in virginia brazil Virginia. that was eight 19 oh, yeah. so that's two years later two years two later years later yeah two years later um of another massive and a massive UFO cover up event. This one is even more fucking ridiculous than the last two that we've been speaking about. I think because it's more of the same, it's of a massive scale. Uh, again, it's it's more of the same. You know, we make contact with something, it's covered up. Uh, we have the government witnesses. Comes in. The government comes in. the The sketchy thing about this. You know what? Let me fucking stop. All right. First, We're first of all, first ahead, of all, yeah. no, 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 no. For for people that do want to see this, because there is actually a movie about this. Yeah, there's uh, a documentary. Is it James Fox? James yeah. Fox is the by James Fox director yeah. of it. Yes, and it is called. Uh, what is it called? It's called Contact. Contact. Something? Is it called Contact? It's called moment of Moment of Contact. Moment of Contact. Yes. It's called Moment of Contact. You have to pay for that one. I think. Yeah, you can. You can get actually it. get it on YouTube too. Okay. I think you can you can rent it for like three ninety nine or whatever. Yeah, I know you. I know you can rent it on Amazon Prime. Yeah, there was. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm, okay. yeah, you can, yeah. You can that on one is crazy, just crazy. Yeah. So again, uh, yeah, James. That's a fucking phenomenal fucking documentary too. So the story is more of the same. Actually, it's it's a uh, it kind of co- co- uh, coincides a little bit more with Roswell. Um, there's sightings going on. There's reportings. Um, and then there's a storm that comes in. There's a storm that comes in. And again, the UFO crashes on a site. Uh, there's a somebody, there's a witness that drove up and kind of was seeing what, what, what was going on. They, the witness made contact with, with, uh, with the craft, um, with the crash site. The military comes in, pushes the witness out at gunpoint to get the fuck out of the way and that's where that story was at that that's kind of where we thought it would end but we later found out that there was this massive fucking panic uh in 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 the favelas and in, in the town of of a being being there you know again a ufo again a fucking gray that that, mm-hmm. that ended mm-hmm. up happening the military ended up coming in they closed off the streets they closed off the streets. They were looking for something. They were looking for something. And again, there was three girls, three witnesses that seen this this being that made contact with it. 
That was um, on one one of the sites though. Remember there's two? Yes. Well yeah, this is the second okay. one. I'm okay. talking I'm talking about the second site now. Um the first one was the crash where that driver, that witness came up, For sure. he was told to get out of there. The military came in, uh, took control of the situation. Site number two is in the favelas, in the town, where there was, uh, again, panic of girls seeing a, a being, a foreign being. Um, and again, panic arose. The military came in, blocked all this stuff out. The They eventually ended up finding the being uh, some military personnel picked up the being because it was injured. They took it to hospitals and stuff like that. And they, they, they drove it around, got x-rays of it. Um, the doctors that took x-rays of it took an x-ray through a bag so they couldn't physically see it. And when they retrieved, when they did the scan and got the x-rays of it, they did it. They weren't able to check if there were accurate scans as well. The military just, took control of the situation mm, mm. and it's very sketchy stuff that the happened. The Brazil military or the... Yes, this this is all um the 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 military of Brazil. It wasn't till later that the military came in and took possession of all these things. They took possessions of the of the, the crash. Yeah, the the United States military okay. ended up coming in at a later point uh took control of the situations and why the U.S. military is in Brazil <laughs> is beyond me. It's it's one of those things that a conspiracy is just a fucking term that's just thrown out just to throw it and see if it fucking sticks. Because it's 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 ridiculous. It, it's 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 ridiculous. Yeah, it's 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 kind of crazy. Um, however, uh, it's again, it's one of those things. There was something going on. And it was covered up. This time, it was covered up by the by the U.S. military. But the military officer that picked up the the being, he ended up dying of of a disease mi- of mysterious a disease. yeah of of mysterious yeah of a disease. Well, then also not only that, but like in a documentary, like people were like, "Yeah, this for sure definitely happened." But then you also do have those skeptics where they're just going with the narrative, they're just going with the story and stuff like that. But uh. But those three chicks seem to be, you know, yeah. they are, like, scared and surprised. I think they said they were, like, within a few yards of it. Like, yeah. Even, I don't know. Yeah, probably closer to me and you. Me yeah, you. I swear. I was like, geez. And they looked scared. And I don't know. That's just crazy to me. Yeah. Um. On the skeptic side of things, these girls did end up taking... Um, I'm not sure if they ever took it, but... They were offered money for to to be quiet. Okay, and I believe they took it, or they were requesting money. Okay, okay. There's something I think. Like I that. think. Oh yeah, because, yep, yep, something like that. Because I think they came into their house and they're like, "No, nah, we're not gonna do that until mm. you guys pay us this." And then there was yeah. some, some, dispute. Yeah, some, between them two. Yeah, so that's kind of where this can lose credibility. Mm. However, you still have the being that was transported. Um, there's witnesses still alive that transported the being, um, that guy that died of mysterious, of a mysterious illness, um, where they took this being to the hospital. It had a horrible stench that they had to close off the wing for, for cleaning and stuff like that. (laughs) Hospital wing. Yeah. They had to close off hospital wing. Uh, there was the doctor that couldn't see it. There was the U S military coming into Brazil the fuck is that about there is yeah it's it's just a bunch of, of, of there's so much information that that gives credibility to this that's I don't know, it's just crazy that's crazy when you put that in perspective and then you just think about everything else that has aligned around those you know those years and stuff you know yeah there is a there is a picture, a uh, drawing rendition of what the being looks like. I will pull it up right here. This is apparently what the being looked like. Again, your typical, your typical gray. Small Dang. body, big head, your typical gray. This this one had like horns and red eyes. Mm, but this one could have been... More detailed one though. The other ones weren't really as you know. Yeah. 
but man it's one of those things dude that you just don't know and this is also i don't know it's just because of this what if these girls are lying okay what whoa this guy what yeah did this whoa, 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 yeah whoa, whoa, whoa. Th this guy was like uh he had some issues like uh he had some mental issues he was okay. known he was known to just live around the block and prior to this event it was raining and maybe this guy was just muddy maybe this guy was just muddy um and he was just chilling maybe this is what the girl saw possibly possibly yeah hmm. yeah possibly this this is the guy that was there however you know can it be true yet yeah, but again why did the military close off these roads why did they take this being to the hospitals? Why is there so much witnesses revolving of foreign species? No. And then on the other side, what? On the other side, it was just where the crash was? Yeah. Other side was a crash site with uh, a craft. Well, it's they, crazy. They were, they were if craft. you watch the documentary, the guy like tears up after finding out that that was a spot. And he just like, I don't know, kind of almost put... You know, shivers. Yeah. Like, you know, I was just like, what? I got goosebumps, you know. I was like, what? This guy is actually crying. Like, you know you know when a man cries. When a man cries for, like, I mean, maybe he might be a good-ass actor, but this guy is literally, you know, crying when he sees, you know, because he remembers all this. Oh, there's a little white thing, and then this road, and then yeah, above the hill. I swear it was right here. And then he finds it, He's like, oh, you know, it is, yeah, oh, that's it's crazy. Yeah, if you guys want to check out what we're talking about, look at the documentary Moment of Contact. It's it's all in there. It's so much information. James Fox does a phenomenal job. Oh yeah, 100%. on this documentary. Um, but yeah, it's a bunch of crazy stuff. The the soldier that ended up picking up the and and that died from mysterious diseases. Mm -hmm. The military ended up paying for his funeral co uh, cost and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and it was a closed casket too. So yeah, the the just because of you know biohazards, they don't want anything leaking. But even like then, that. it's like that kind of gives you that kind of gives it off. Like, why are you paying for his mini, uh, funeral? Then? Yeah, why <laughs> is nothing? You know, yeah, why is it closed casket? I mean, why can't the families have a final look at their you know at their relative? That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. it's a, another massive situation. <sighs> Damn, that's too yeah. much. Yeah, I think I think for this one the ufo crash was real uh the alien encounter is a little suspicious however how can especially it? with that uh with that one picture yeah with that one picture and then especially but you never with, know you never yeah especially with the girls wanting uh wanting payment to not say anything wanting a certain dollar amount especially with that however it it gives it a little bit credit that takes from its credibility but the credibility comes from the people that were transporting this being, the people, the military personnel that seen it, the doctors that took x-rays of it. Um, and then not only that, but then I think in the documentary it showed, uh, it showed they went to the city and the city is filled with like UFO memorabilia, you know, memorabilia yeah. and just, you know, just yeah. kind of like, you know, something. There's yeah. a big saucer in the middle of the city or something like that. Yeah, I, I think the cover-up methods in Same this... Same thing with Roswell, though. Yeah. Roswell's literally... And known for, it's yeah. a UFO attraction yeah. site now. Yeah, it's a it hotspot for that. So it's like, I mean... Yeah, the, the cover-up methods for this case were very effective. And then it's... They were very effective after the military, the U.S. military came in, though. Um, However, the Brazil military ended up having... You know, if 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 they want to brush this as you know, uh, you know, uh, a military drill, because that's what that's what the Brazil the Brazilian military said it was. It was just a military drill, which they do have those and in similar fashion as well. Um, however, how is a drill going to have a one thousand page army report on the events that took place on that on that day? Yeah, it, it's that is it's it's that's... a bunch of crazy stuff that that. And we just have questions, no answers. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Questions, no answers. That's, yeah. To life is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. It really is. So after Virginia, Virginia, what, we got anything new or we got any, you know, any so, of this stuff? Yeah. It's, Where should we go? Where should we go from this? 
I don't know. I mean, my question is, where are these crafts at? What is the type of technology that we've been retrieving from this? Uh, We're probably learning from it. Yeah. Making newer of our, you know, military grade stuff. I don't know. Yeah. If, if these, if these contacts are true, we would, since 1947, we would be in possession of, of UFO crafts since and 1947. That's the earliest there's not any earlier ones that there's not any, you know. At least, I believe there's not. At least to my awareness, the Roswell crash site. There's is, no, like, paintings maybe? You know, I don't know. Just, oh, you want to get into that? No, I'm just not. I'm, I'm asking, you know. Okay, so of crafts that we've recovered, 1947 Roswell is the earliest that we have. Of, of crafts that we recovered. Of UFO sightings. They go back to the biblical times. Oh my god! No, let's not let's not get into that. We'll 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 if we'll get into that later and uh, with uh, different evidence and stuff like that. But that's that's another one for the pod. Yeah, another another, Damn, another good. One. I mean, there's literally paintings. <laughs> yeah, but again, um, it would be. I think I would take it towards te- towards like you know, do we have technology in our possession? Have we been able to reconstruct it? Um. All this, all this, all these crash sites that have been happening. Have we truly received something? Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Bob Lazar that worked <laughs> at a secret uh, facility here in the United States that says that he was tasked of of uh, back engineering these these beings. He said that there, you know, that we have. Crafts in our possession, multiple crafts, different shapes, cigar shaped crafts, crafts, um, you know, your regular disc, uh, your bell crafts. And he was in charge of back engineering the propulsion systems. And he that's another crazy story in itself, because he was first of all, he's a very wait, 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 wait. I need to pee. All right. Bad. All right. Go ahead. I've been holding it. Me too back all right sorry for that took a little break uh we're back we were at uh um, Lazar. yeah we were at bob lazar technology secret facilities um so yeah um long story short bob lazar was a genius uh his specialty is uh propulsions uh when he was a young buck this guy ended up putting a jet engine in his in his vehicle in is his, it a honda his little honda yeah uh, he ended up getting recruited by Los Alamos and then later ended up working at S4, one of the facilities, um, one of those secret facilities, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, Los Alamos was the facility that I'm not sure if you've seen the movie or you're familiar. Oppenheimer. Uh, yeah, Oppenheimer. Uh, he created Los Alamos to research the uh, the the atomic well, I didn't bombs. I didn't know um, Los Alamos was uh, was where Oppenheimer was uh, until the movie Oppenheimer. I, was I like, did. Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't know. That. I, I was, was like, like, I was watching it. They threw that hint. I was like, what the fuck? I was mind blown to me. I was like, that's a good movie though. Yeah, yeah, everyone, I mean, everyone in, into science and all this stuff should yeah. literally go watch. It's probably the best movie in twenty twenty three. Yeah, has to be. so. Again, uh, Los, Alamo, Los Alamos was a secret site initially built and commissioned for the creation of the first atomic weapons bombs by Oppenheimer and his team. Uh, this is a facility at the frontier of innovation, technology, and knowledge. This is a site that houses the most advanced minds and puts them to work on the most advanced form of technologies. If what the rumors are saying true... And there is recovered crafts, and there are at and they are at Los Alamos. Then we have most definitely back engineered these crafts. It's been almost eighty years since the first reporting of UFO crafts and their retrieval by the military. There is definitely a possibility that we as humans are just not intelligent enough to decipher this advanced technology. But I think that that statement is overrated. Um, all of mankind's creations and progressions have happened within the last 100 years. The Wright brothers created the first airplane in 1903, 120 years ago. Uh, humans went to space in 1969, 54 years ago. Not just space, the moon. 
Yeah, yeah. Fif- the moon. 54 years ago. This we haven't peri- gone back. Yeah, this period of advancements by our monkey brains is from scratch. We developed this technology from zero. And if we have been harboring UFO crafts in our possession, do you really think we wouldn't have made something out of it yet? Of already having this technology there, all we have to do is just figure out how it works. Well, for sure. Yeah. So I think we definitely do have a form of UFOs now in our possession, ready to go, armed, uh, being piloted by our uh, by our Air Force. Um, and this gentleman by the name of Bob Lazar is uh, or was responsible for helping out the propulsion mecha- mechanisms um, for figuring for back engineering these things. So, yeah, it's crazy. Here is actually, um, so again, uh, long story short, Bob Lazar, uh, you know, he was working at this, at, at these sites. Um, he ended up getting fired because, again, this is a top secret site. They they basically know everything about you. Um, they ended up figuring, they ended up finding out that his wife was having an affair on him, um, which is why they fired him because they thought, you know, if he would have found out it would have he would become unstable and untrustworthy. Uh, they ended up firing him and he ended up, um, you know, getting fired. Uh, he brought his buddies to the sites like where they would see these UFOs take off and land all the time. Uh, so that's when he mainly got on. Well, he knew the, he knew the schedules. Yeah. He, he knew the schedules of when they're going to test these crafts yeah and, and he took out his buddies and then that's when they saw and which actually this air these areas i think they're off Publix now yeah correct they are it's um, way more and you know. and that's when he started getting on the military's radar and when he started fearing for his life because for sure. they would start threatening him uh showing up to his house they would start following him um and that's when he started getting on the radar. So he went public with all the information that he knew about Los Alamos and S4 and all these facilities and all this secret information and all these per, uh, special proposal, uh, proportion mechanisms. Uh, he went public and that is when he got discredited. What is when he went public with the news yeah, station? Because if you Google him, he's going to be... I don't know what his Google page yeah. or his Wikipedia it, it, page says. Yeah, it says that he's not an, that it's very credible. Yeah, it way, says that he's a, an American conspiracy theorist. Yep. yep. And uh, it discredited him from the school he went to and yeah. where he was at. But yet he knew everywhere around the Solomon's. He knew what area and this and that, which that area is, it was confirmed, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's one hundred percent. Yeah, it's one hundred percent confirmed. His involvement in working there and going to the schools and being recruited is all documented. So, um, as far as his uh, him being discredited goes, uh, that's kind of been debunked. Uh, thank, thank, thanks to actually um, Jeremy Corbell. He's a UFO researcher, and he actually made again another phenomenal documentary. Um, Bob Lazar. Area 51 and Flying Saucers. Is I think so. What his documentary is called. It. And you can find it on Netflix, correct? No. Uh-uh. Amazon? It's Amazon. Yeah. You can find yeah, you, you can find it on Amazon, on Amazon Prime. Um but yeah, and so he went public with all this information. Um he sketched out kind of how these crafts looked. He sketched out how he thinks they worked. Uh, again, he was responsible for the propulsion mechanisms on back engineering those things. He said that they these crafts are operated by anti-gravity force fields. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he put his hands on when he tried to put his hands on the these uh, propulsion mechanisms, it's as if he couldn't touch him as if two opposing magnets going against each other. Um, and yeah, and this was, when, when did this happen? It's kind of like if it was levitating, uh, like if you were going to grab you know, a ball and it just levitated and you wouldn't be, you weren't able to touch it Yeah, like that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, he did end up sketching. He did end up sketching what these look like. 
This is his original sketch by Bob Lazar of how these craft looks and how he thinks um, they work. So this is his original sketch. Uh, this was back when he first leaked his information, mm. uh, the reactor and the anti-gravity amplifiers on how these crafts operate. What and is that waveguide? What that waveguide? Do you know anything about uh, that? No, I don't. Hmm. No, I don't. Well, that kind of looks exactly like the those kids drew something, yeah, it, some little light things ex- or whatever. You know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It kind of um, correlates the these congressional hearings that just happened recently uh, in, in in real time. He said that similar to how these crafts work is they make sort of a bubble around around these crafts, and this is what allows them to kind of work anti-gravital maybe interdimensional crafts as well maybe they 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 travel through different dimensions that aren't possible for us humans to currently uh to currently comprehend yeah that's crazy yeah so it's definitely fucking crazy and then uh talk about the uh the uh what was it on the periodic table oh uh element <laughs> 115 i don't know yeah element 115 right yeah so again uh bob lazar also stole from uh from s4 uh this uh, element compound it's very unstable he you can't keep it alive for long enough uh, i believe is element 115 um and he also leaked this information when uh, to, to the press when he came out when he leaked all this information when he was scared for his life he said that there's this element 115 that is used for the propulsions of these foreign vehicles and again they're discredited that doesn't exist well come to recent times a few years ago element 115 exists and that is the crazy part yeah. i was like bro that's kind of what that's that's kind of what uh, solidified me believing in him mm-hmm. because I think he came up with this information what in the nineteen eighties or nineteen eight nineties nineteen nineties I believe nineteen nineties and then in like early two thousands I think that yeah. was when uh, element one fifteen or whatever yeah uh, was, was was added to the periodic table yeah <laughs> that's exactly crazy. that is crazy he talked about it before even adding into it so obviously this guy is you know. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think we can definitely uh say that his life experiences are more true than not for for for, 100%. for a fact. He did say that these crafts, uh their cockpits where uh, pilots would reside in are very small as mm-hmm. well. Like so four, four feet or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. four feet. He did say it all correlates, man. He mentioned as well that when he was walking through the you know, through these facilities that they he thought he thought were aliens uh that he's seen aliens in these facilities um but that was just a glance that's nothing accurate he actually says that he doesn't think they were he were probably just dolls or something mm, along those okay. lines just kind of like a figures you need yeah. to kind of put it in perspective of how big yeah something can fit in there correct and okay. there and they were around your traditional stereotypical alien description of a gray of a gray of yeah. a gray so yeah element 115 it was a super dense element that is extremely reactive however um very unstable so so what uh i guess we talk you talk about i think i can answer this or ask this question now but you talk about grays what other type of species is there other type of species uh other than grays that we know i mean not obviously we don't even know grays even exist but you know because i mean we do but we don't yeah um because like we can't that information is unknown to us in in a way i know i want to believe it too but it's like we don't really know yeah so uh, you know it can be you know that we actually know of no i mean just grays that have been reporting and then and then um like reptilians have also been cited as well really? like yeah like of a giant there's actually recently of a of a of an alien looking creature that was caught on camera 
you have to you have to pull this up uh, this information uh, when you and, and put it in. But I'm not sure if you've seen. There's this alien looking reptilian thing. Was that the one I sent you? I think it was. That, but I don't know. I didn't do much. I just sent it honestly. But I didn't do if it was actually real or if it was from. I think it was from, or if it was fake. That's the thing. So that video that you sent me. He was it, like this, kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. He was like, hunched over, just, like, it, it looking was, like all weird and stuff. Yeah, it was this reptilian looking thing. There was a nine one one dispatch call. Oh, attached that one to in, that. in Las Vegas. Yeah, Las Vegas. Yeah, there was a nine one one call dispatched. But and you can also see it, kind of like yeah. Him. But I don't know if that if those correlated or if someone just made it up because of that nine one one call. Yeah. It, but also that nine one one call, that shit's crazy. These guys are literally. They call, hey, we see something staring at us, mm-hmm. and it gives, I mean, it gives, gives me goose, goosebumps right now. And then like something staring at us, and it, and they, sh- I mean, I don't know a lot. I hate looking at the comments because then the comments are like, oh, we live in 2023, and you can't get a good footage, like, bro, <laughs> you know, it's digital zoom, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it's it it that that's crazy. Yeah, that and, sounds crazy. And there was there was footage attached to that 911 call supposedly. Yeah, it it can be made up, but So that, I don't know, see so, so that's why I'm saying I don't know if that uh footage of that actual because that's clear as footage. That's some yeah. good footage. Yeah. Where it's like hmm. But back but to your, I'll still put it up. I'll still put it up. Yeah, but back to your question that there's been major reportings on just grays and reptilians. Mm, mm. Which is Unfortunately, again, a conspiracy, you know, reptilian for sure. going to take over the world and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but that would be, but it, it, that would be the pilots. That's what, that's what's piloting these crafts. And UFOs is one of those things that is kept secret, again, for the technology aspect of it. And uh, again, tying it to the military industrial complex on why there's so much hush around this ufo topics on why there's so much secrecy oh, on why 100%. there's so much efforts going to to keep these secret to keep these from other nations finding out for sure um you would have the the thing that ties this that that ties this to i guess uh, the conspiracy of all this stuff is the black budget of the united states the black budget is basically they they have to they have to release you know what the what the government spends on year after year and there's always this portion that goes to that's that's what the community has ca- calls it the black budget money that we don't know where it goes we we lost track okay. of it and stuff okay. like that kind of like Afghanistan <laughs> <laughs> anyway a- a- anyway um it's money that's that's that that we lose sight of now a lot of this money goes towards the military industrial complex that that we can't tie to it because you know it arises suspicion um uh it it creates a lot of heat and the people that are tied to this military industrial complex particularly in this ufo aircraft air, where we get our aircrafts would be boeing lockheed martin and general dynamics these are all general contractors that make our our current sure. our current aircrafts they would be the people they would be the 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 organizations that would back engineer these crafts they would be the ones that are that are involved with that are involved in these secret facilities and i mean you put this all into perspective like if i found something that i could use against my enemies or against you know anybody it's just like why would i tell somebody about it Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's kind of crazy to think about, but I mean, looking at that from a nation point of view, I guess they're not doing the wrong thing if you want to say that. But who am I to, you know, judge those decisions? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, there is another topic that I want to get into. And it's personally one of my favorite ones of, you know, of UFOs, aliens, uh, conspiracies and all this stuff. It's probably one of my favorite ones, if not my favorite ones, which is crop circles. Okay. Which is crop circles. And you want to get into that now? or Yeah, I want to get into that now. Okay. Or, or, unless you have any more. 
Unless you still want to stay on the topic. Of uh, no, I mean, I, the thing is that, you know, I want to do this to kind of, you know, inform people just that people don't know. So like, I can't really think of something that I could ask or I could say about Bob Lazar, hmm. but you know, the, the stuff is out there for all these things. It's not like we're pulling it out of our ass either. We are being the most realistic we can be without, you know, mm -hmm. making shit up or being conspiracy theorists about it. Mysteries of the crop circles. Um, Again, one of my favorite topics for... Crop circles was one of the things that when you were a kid, you kind of only heard about it. I honestly don't hear nothing about it right now. Actually, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. let's go back to the whole, the whole scenario or the, all of these things. I know we mentioned Virginia, which is in Brazil, and then two mm. other ones, which is in the United States. But it just seems like all these sightings, all this stuff, it's just in the USA. So the sightings, yes. The All these UFO sightings, yes. And the USA gets a lot of backlash from other countries. We're like, oh, why don't, uh, why don't we, you know, why don't we see UFOs and this and that? But USA was the, was the first nation to create the atomic bombs. USA ah. is the only nation to uh, create havoc and devastation with them again on Hiroshima and Nawasaki. We're the only ones that use them against another nation. And so, we are the number one in the world. Now you can say that, you know? Yeah, yeah. We're the greatest country in the world. So the, we're the most powerful country to so ever I, exist on the face so, of this earth. So, so, if, so if there was something, you know, mm, there was somebody watching out for us, I yeah. guess, I'd... You know, watch mm -hmm. out number one. Yeah, not only that, but our military is the biggest. We spend the most amount of money on our military. We spend the most amount of money on innovation as well. Uh, most of the innovation in the world comes from the United States. And all our programs, our, our NASA programs, which our NASA and the military, you know, coincide back to back. Most of our technology that we have today is because of NASA uh, and because of innovation and because of... The, Bones, and all this stuff. All and this because stuff. of the military, uh, GPS, I'm not sure if you know, but GPS, our maps, that was a military weapon hmm. that was... Long before we could ever use it. Yeah, long before we could ever use it. And then uh, the government released it for public use. Hmm. So, And a lot of these things, you know, that's another good, good pod to talk about. Uh, just all the technology we have in our hands is all for, you know, it's all been exist. It's all existed. It's just been now you know gave to us like okay you guys can use it for the public now. yeah it's very on cameras all this stuff because you know i'm obviously into into, into you know mm -hmm. photography and stuff and it's just all this stuff it's like damn it's very unfortunate that all of in us all of innovation comes with conflict mm -hmm. um the cold war um you know the race to space uh world war uh the race for nuclear weapons it's sad that innovation is tied to conflict and trying to have trying to figure out new methods of technology that gives us the upper hand. But, you know, it's unfortunately that's the world that we live in and uh because of it we're able to I guess be the number one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's it's kind of a sucky thing, but you know, it's the world we live in. It's a cold world out there. Crop circles. Um, back to what you were saying, though. Um, why the U.S., it, you know, it's it's really mainly UFO sightings. Because, again, yeah, Roswell was in the U.S., yes. But um, the contact was in Zimbabwe. Um, the, you know, basically the Brazilian Roswell, you know. So For sure. Th there's been a lot of contacts outside of a contact outside of the U.S. Uh, Russia has a few as well. R Russia has a few as well. And then crop circles. Crop circles uh, actually started being recorded in the U.K., in, in England and mm. in the surrounding areas. So, yeah, crop circles. Um, I know nothing about this. Man, it's, uh, and again, it's one of those rabbit holes. Um, but it, I, uh, have, I have a very, I have a good theory about them, though, that we'll uncover that won't we'll cover as we as we talk about the crop circles are, are are crazy because you know knowing how farmers work and all this stuff like just being out i don't know it's just you gotta be you gotta be precise on this shit yeah uh, well yeah you have to be extremely precise and actually have you ever been in a corn maze 
Bro, I survey in corn fields. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes, well, most of, you know, not well, most, but sometimes. Well, corn mazes, how how these farmers make them is they have a computer on their tractor, well, and with GPS and all this stuff, they input it basically like uh, think of it like a digital program. Yep, yep. And it makes le- it kind of makes the tractor go on autopilot, and then it just plants corn in specific designated areas precisely. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, since I'm into, you know, survey and stuff, yeah. uh, they have their own network too. Damn. The, but it's a shitty network compared to the Iowa RTN or compared to the uh, GLONASS, you know, all these, uh, I, you know, all this stuff. Or, you know, uh, basically all this, all this, the, the, they have their, they have their own, but it's, it's just a shittier because they don't need to be that precise. They need, mm-hmm. you know, us were within hundreds, but they're within, you know some tents or something like that mm-hmm. i mean they're still precise but it's not as precise as what we use yeah and of course the the higher the number the more preciseness the lower the number the less preciseness you just said you're within hundreds and they're within tenths the wait how say that again the the lower the better the lower the better the yeah. lower the better and the higher the the, the worse okay. the worse you get so yeah mysteries of the crop circles um crazy it, it's great Crop circles, unfortunately, but again, I have a theory about this, has the worst reputation. You think of crop circles, you think of tinfoil hats Mm -hmm. for a reason. Uh, Again, we won't cover that. So, uh, the Wilshire crop circle recorded in 1996 by John Whaley um, is a very credible crop circle finding. Um, he recorded glowing orbs out of nowhere, mm-hmm. and they're just glowing orbs circling crop crop fields, and then out of nowhere, a crop circle appears. This was caught on camera, which you can add it. You can add the footage later. Um, this is solid, I guess, would say solid evidence of of filming a crop circle real time on areas. Now, how crop circles come to be is. Um, You know, you have witnesses that see a crop filled with crops moments later, not, you know, not days later that of what you would feel, you know, crop crop circles are something very uh, intriguing, very precise. I'll show you some pictures here later, Um, but it would take time to make crop circles. And then moments later, crop the, the witness comes back to the same spot and a crop appears, a crop circle appears. So, um, so let me start with the most fascinating one. In 1974, uh, the Arecibo radio transmitter, we, we sent out the, it's called the Arecibo message in 1974, we sent the Ares, the Arecibo message to a cluster of star systems in outer space, right? What? Yes. Okay. Th- this was in 1974. Okay. Um, Carl Sagan. So the team was made by Dr. Frank Drake with the famous Drake equation. And um, Carl Sagan, do uh, you know who Carl Sagan yeah, is? Yeah, Blue Dot. Yeah. Uh, he, My favorite picture. Yeah, he, he, wasn't, he, he wasn't part of this Arecibo message, but he promoted it and he was for it. Mm-hmm. So what this message is, is uh, 1,679 binary digits that could be converted into a image designated to convey information about civilization here on Earth. So this is, uh, you know what, We'll, we'll, we'll hold off on the image of that later. So... So we sent an image to outer space. Now, keep in mind, we're on the topic of crop circles. And we sent an image down uh, into space. Because the image, we sent it to a specific cluster, we think for anybody to receive it, or even let alone send a message back, it would take 50,000 years. Of our years? Yes, of our years. Okay. And let me actually show you the message that we sent out. The message that we sent out is this converted to converted to image. This is the message that we sent out. 
This is called the Arecibo message. This is the message that we sent out from the Arecibo Institute. Um, the top digits is basically a Rosetta Stone uh, showing you how to decipher this message. Okay. Uh, okay. How? How? Yeah. Like the instructions? How would I decide, yeah. How would I decipher this? Okay. These? So this is, this is binary code digits. So out of all these cubes, it, it shows you how to, how to read it. Now, f for me to explain to you, you're not going to get it. You kind of need to study this and figure out how to decipher this and then figure out, because it's all number digits. Okay. It's all basically computer digits. Okay, okay. So the first set of symbols represents the numbers from 1 to 10 reading left to right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The cluster in the center codes the atomic numbers for certain elements, carbon, what we're made out of, which is this. These patterns represent formulas, sugars, and bases in nucleotides of DNA. So we have our DNA, we have our DNA symbol here as well. Okay. We, we have our human. This is supposed to okay. represent us. Uh -huh. uh, down here is supposed to send the telescope on which this message was sent. This right here is one of my is my favorite part of this message here. This is the sun, our planet, Earth. Ah. Earth the is the one standing out to showing that we sent this message. Uh, you know, and then the rest of the planets. That's cool. Holy yeah, it's, shit, it's I didn't really know cool. Nothing about this shit. Let me see. Let me get it. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking amazing. Okay. And uh, again, this shows our DNA, what we're made out of For carbon. Sure. We're carbon uh, people. And yeah, so this is what we sent out, hoping somebody would one day receive this, decode it, and you know, just oh shit, you know, human sent this. Here. Yep, yeah. yep. Human sent this. And again, we're on the topic of crop circles. Twenty-seven years later. Twenty-seven years later. Okay. We got a response. <laughs> Bro, it's, it's too early for this shit. We got see, 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 a see, fucking see, see. response. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a fucking response. Ready for it? No. Let me see. Oh my god. This was our response right here. Crop circles, not necessarily crop circles by uh the SETI Institute. I think this is a steady a SETI Institute. Mm -hmm. It's uh institute uh specifically designed to find life in outer space. Okay. This is the crop circle. That's our Aerocebo message. Now I'm not sure if you notice another crop circle of a what? figure. Is that them? Maybe. What? Maybe. But these happen these happen overnight. Like they, they they don't happen like yes, yes, yes. Pe pe people, dude. There's fucking a parking lot right there. There's people come there. People work there. They yeah, notice yeah, 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 yeah. what's around there or not, and they notice that message there. What year is this? This was. Uh, okay, so the Arecibo message was sent in 1974. 27 years later. So in the 90s. Okay. So this was in the 90s. What the? 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. So this is what they sent back. Now, um, okay, yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. So we then took this image, obviously, and we digitized it similar okay. to the image that I uh, showed you earlier. Okay. This is gonna fucking blow your mind, dude. And did you just oh, okay, okay, I get okay. Yeah. This is what they sent back. For sure. <sighs> nah. They sent back hold no, up. No, 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 no. Hold up. They what? sent back their own message back to us. Basically it's exactly the same thing. Uh the exact number digits to decode the message. This element instead of carbon, which is our life form. Uh -huh stands for silica silica based life form a different form of life form this is their dna they have an extra strand in their dna here i'll pull up the other one so you can see how they look side by side this is the other one this is how you can tell them side by side so it so so that the the the, the other one not the one that we sent the other one 
that was what was in the crop circle? Yes, this is what is in the crop circle. Okay. okay. So we have our Arecibo message. For sure, for sure. And then we have our Arecibo response. This was 27 years. This, this was 27 years later. Wait, was it 27 years later? I think it was. It was something like that. We sent it and we got something back in the form of a crop circle. We then digitized it. To, and it's exactly how we sent it. They, they sent us and they, they just tweaked to how they are. Mm -hmm. Again, they have their silica life form. They have an extra strand in, they have an extra strand in their DNA. They have a figure of how they look like. Does that look familiar? <laughs> what does that look like? The gray, man. Exactly. The gray. the gray. This time they sent back their solar system. Whoa, what is that? They sent back their solar system. It looks like they inhabit three one, planets two, in, yeah, in their what? solar system. This one, I believe, is what is where they sent the signal from. Okay. Which is why okay. it's it's highlighted in a different form. And then this is the telescope, <laughs> or this is where they sent their message from. Uh -huh. uh, however that looks like. What the fuck? Yes, sir. What? Oh, my God. I have yeah. so many questions. Um, how, do we, how do we know this isn't? just made up by whoever sent this you know we don't we don't okay. and which is the unfortunate thing now there is so drake sent out drake and his team sent out the aerosible message it is they did it, they ever see it like carl say and drake did they ever see that response yes yes they, they all don't. okay yeah they all said it now there's some information saying that uh drake and his team sent out sent out this message to other colleagues including mm -hmm. carl sagan mm -hmm. Um, for them to decipher themselves, they were able to decipher it. Carl Sagan was really? the one. Carl Sagan was the one to also decipher them, decipher it. However, these this crop circle appeared like overnight. It, it appeared overnight. Who is going to end with, and out of nowhere as well? For sure. Who is going to, first of all, get this image and then put it onto a land of crops? And get it into the exact same digit codes. Remember, there's mm -hmm. one, there's 1600 digit codes. Who the fuck is gonna do that overnight? Precisely. Th these are precise. These are precise crop circles as well. Now, one more thing. Do you see their telescope here? Yeah, it has, it's like fucking. It's weird as fuck, right? Yeah. Oh my god, are you blow my mind again? You tell me. Another crop circle that appeared oh, around the God. same time. Oh, my fucking what? Do you do you get do you get it? They're trying to tell us something. Somebody's trying to tell us something. I don't know if they're fucking aliens, but someone is telling us something. They sent a crop circle image, and that looks like their telescope. Maybe I'm just putting two to two together. <sighs> no, maybe dude. I'm just fucking out of my mind. I mean, mind. maybe we're just trying to believe it. Maybe let's just say that. Let's say, but. Uh, yeah, and you know where this was also at? Where? Is this all in the UK, or where was this? I believe so, look. Okay. The same spot? Yes. In the same spot. Yes. Bro. Now, I believe this was a year earlier. This was a year earlier, and then we got our Aerocebo okay, message. Okay. So they were like, what the fuck is this? Yes. They are probably like, huh? Yeah. But still, they were like, Dude, that's so fine. Like, that's so... Tell me about it. Bro. Mm, I don't know. I've been in... I've, I've been in a lot of crops and... I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I would yeah. like to... I would like to go and see, you know, how... I don't know. I don't know. That's okay, crazy. that's crazy. Now, let me continue to further blow your mind. Okay. And there's some interesting facts that as I was going into this, uh huh, that as I was I was going into this, um, these interesting facts came up. Scientists started studying and analyzing the crops affected in the crop circles. So they started, they started, they started comparing how the crops act and grow in the affected crop circles, so the areas that are affected, okay. and the surrounding, the ones right next to them, the ones that yep, were not yep. affected. What we found out is that the crops that were affected were bigger, higher, 
and there were better crops. Hmm. And this was due to a process that they call flash glazing, electromagnetic radiation. So how this science breaks down, you know, I, I can say this interesting fact. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. However, the crops that were affected were better crops. For sure. Mm -hmm. Because of this flash, mm -hmm. flash glazing. So, so we have that. Now we also have more we also have more crops circles sure. that are that are that are interesting here. Let me just delete these here and let me show you another crop circles that was around the same time frame as well. Boom. <laughs> Does that look like Is that like a being? That's a fucking gray, bro. Look at that fucking. That's a fucking being, bro. And then what is that? That that little, that's like a little fucking colony or something. I don't know. This was a uh, another binary code message. Now somebody somebody fuck? translated it, dude. I, I'm first of all, I know this is crop circuits, or whatever. But unless we don't, unless we like have some different technology, like I I don't know. I've been around crops. That's what that's what's blowing my mind. To be honest, I've been around crops crops and it's just like it's yeah it's they're meant to just go yeah this was know, this was where uh, was this at this was same place a year later okay a year later in the same place okay yeah uh, this was a this was a year later um after the arecibo answer now again this is this is uh this is binary code so it's kind of like computer code and the message says in this me this is the message here. The message says, "Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises. Much pain, but still time. Believe there is good out there. We oppose deception." It's more messages similar to the messages in Zimbabwe. You know, be careful of World War Three. Be careful of impending doom. You know. Holy fuck. It's, it's, it's a bunch what? of crazy stuff. The, the, now, if you look at it again, try to look at it from a neutral point of okay. view, yep, who, yep, yep. who can be creating these things? One, we know one thing is true. The crops that are being affected are better crops due to flash gazing, electromagnetic radiation, mm -hmm. which means that you just heat them and then they cool. I know some shit with heat. Um, the, if you try to look at it from a neutral point of view and try to, try to try to have an answer you know somebody is creating these someone is someone someone is creating these the only way to create these is by tamping down the crops mm -hmm. is is just manipulating just tamping them down one thing it takes a lot of people two things it it doesn't go over, it doesn't happen overnight it doesn't happen overnight it takes a very long time um, they're not precise. They're not is which is the main part. They're not precise. So, it's a bunch of crazy stuff. Damn. I mean, okay. So if I look at it from like a non, you know, like I, I obviously want to believe this is happening. But if I look at it like that, like, do you think it's just us doing that so that way we can like, w w w you know, like just watch out for us and like you know, let, let's just for example, our country or whoever is doing that. That way they can, that way we can be like, hey, if these other people, you know, just something to believe in. If, you know, this they're telling us to watch out, we should j just watch out. You know, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do get what you're trying to say. You know, yeah. That could be that too. You know, we, 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 just, we just don't know. But, but I don't know, man. There's too much. There's, there's a lot to take in. I know. That I've never, I honestly never did investigation on uh or any research on crop circles yeah it's it's a bunch of crazy stuff the, the rabbit hole is much of the same um there was again an, n another crop circles of much of the same stories um the the british intelligence wanted to figure out who was doing these crop circles so mm -hmm. they put up a co-op uh, they put up a front of like a crop researcher and they filmed the whole thing. They filmed the whole thing. And again, it was a cover up. 
Like they're, they're just trying to throw dirt on them. The CIA is also involved in cover-ups with crop circles too. The CIA, it's... Again, I don't want to say it's a conspiracy or stuff like that, but like, why why is there a cover up of trying to like, of, of a mis a misinformation yeah. campaign against crop circles? Now, back to my theory about this stuff. Okay. So, my theory is that crop circles is one of is is a primitive method of communication. I think that. If these things are real, there is a species out there that wants to make contact with us, the people, mm -hmm. and this is one of the only ways that they can do it. And this is a way that they can contact us directly, not through a form of government, not through a form of tyranny, not through a form of this. This is how they can contact us directly. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the government wants us making contact with them. I think that mm -hmm. they want to control everything. Mm -hmm. which is why I also think that there is a ginormous misinformation campaign against crop circles and why if you, if you hear crop circles, you, you hear fucking tinfoil hat, you know, kooks. So I think maybe that that is why we don't hear much of this. I think this is why there's cover ups about this. And who knows? I actually haven't I actually haven't looked into but i don't know when was the last time we got we received the crop circle is a thing too are these i think there was there aren't they more aren't there more crop circles yes there is plenty more there is you can google crop circles for sure for sure a lot of them come up a lot of, but again as, as i'm saying there was a misinformation campaign there was a cover-up the cia was involved of smearing everything that has to do around sar, uh, crop crop circles mm -hmm. so it's something that is just crazy you get me it's just like, oh, you're into crop circles? Oh, you're fucking crazy. For like, sure. That, that's one of those that's, type of things. That's yeah. how successful the misinformation campaign against crop circles is. Jeez. <laughs> Damn. I might have to do some research on crop circles. After this. A thousand percent. <laughs> A thousand percent. That is crazy. I don't know. But, I mean... There's also a, a project maybe they want to, you know. <laughs> that is when we get into conspiracies. Yeah, 100%. Probably with, with Project Blue Beam. With Project Blue Beam. Yeah, but still, I mean, you know, you get, I feel like in order to think, in, in order to have an open mind, you have to think about everything. You have to think about what I would think, what you would think, what, you know, other people would think. You got to think, you know, you can't, you can't just, you know. Back to what I just, you know, responded. Yeah. You can't just shut somebody up just because you don't like it or believe it. So, yeah. Um, what is Project Bloom for those that don't know? I don't want to really get much into it because I don't have uh, the right names and all this stuff. But long story short, uh, this guy worked for the government and he knew of a a project that the government was working on plot a plot or whatever that it hasn't it hasn't happened yet but it was basically like some asian invasion thing and to make people believe it so we can go into a one world order type of thing yeah so that i mean like i said you know that that's a lot in the conspiracy thing and then like he ended up i don't know if he ended up dying like out of he out of nowhere same thing but that's uh, that's a hundred percent more on the conspiracy side yeah. of things. Yeah, this is but, like a I don't. Percent of conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I actually so. do have a little bit of information about that. Should I read it? It's kind of. I mean, you can just read it for fun, but that's the, the disclaimer that that's nothing. <clears throat> yeah, that we. Yeah, disclaimer. This is one hundred percent a conspiracy theory. This is one hundred percent. Nothing true is tied to this. Um, that we know of, that we know, that we know of. of we, I haven't done any research on it. I just, you know, you, you get into those conspiracy theories, yeah. and you're like, oh yeah. shit. So yeah, just a disclaimer: this is 100% a conspiracy theory. Uh, so Project Blue Bean. In 1994, Serge Monast published Project Blue Beam, in which he detailed his claims that NASA, with the help of the United Nations, is attempting to implement 
a new age religion with the Antichrist at its head and start a new world order via a technology simulated second coming of Christ. This project has four steps. Step one, breaking down all of the archaeological knowledge by faking earthquakes, earthquakes at precise locations around the planet. Fake news discoveries will initially explain to all the people the error of all the fundamental religious doctrines, specifically Christian and Muslim doctrines. Step two, gigantic space shows where in three-dimensional holographic lasers projections will be beamed all over the planet. The projections will take shape of whatever deity is most prominent and will speak in all the languages. At the end of the light show, all gods will merge into one, the Antichrist. The Antichrist. Delusion of social aid and religious order will set loose millions of programmed religious fanatics through demonic possessions on a scale never witnessed before. United Nations plans to use Beethoven's Ode to Joy as the introduction to New Age One World Religion. Damn, this is actually a. Uh, there's so much more to read. But holy uh, shit, there's yeah. so much more yep. to read. Yep. Yep. You know That's... what? You know what? I'll go ahead and stop there, because yeah. for a few reasons, one, we don't even we're... know about to read. So yeah, one, there's just so much things. Two, a lot of things, a lot of these things that I just read, a lot of these things that I'm kind of looking into, it kind of looks like we're living in those times right now. <laughs> See, that's why I'm like, you know, I, I don't know if it is a conspiracy. It's yeah. a conspiracy right now. But... You know what? We'll have to do more research about this. Sure. Long story short, Project Bloom Beam is crazy. It's fucking crazy. About. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. That's, I feel like we covered a pretty good amount. You know, that is the, what'd you call this? The Alien Complex Part 1. Yes, this is UFO complex. Intellects episode 001, The Alien and UFO Complex Part 1. Perfect. There is a tremendous amount of information out there about aliens and UFOs and everything revolving around it. And we can dive into organizations that work with technologies that would look like come from out of the earth. There is organizations out there that suppress this information, such as the government, our own entity that is implemented to protect us and to help Americans thrive, but yet they keep so many secrets from us. Um, so this is definitely part one of a series that is going to continue for a long time as new information comes up, as new old information dies down. We'll be uncovering old information, covering new information. Covering current information current as well. Current information uh, as well. You know, just as things unravel then. We can talk about him. Uh, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to cover because we're honestly always interested in this type of stuff. So it's good to just, you know, maybe just talk about it and just put it out there and see what people think, you know? Yeah, we're, we might fucking get canceled. You know, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but uh, we will always just try to put out what is there and not just make stuff up where, um, you know, and have an open mind. I think the best thing is to have an open mind about all this and and believe it, but not believe it, and think this, but think that. You know, yeah, do your own and, research. And do your own research, and that's that's what primarily what we want to, you know. Yeah. Put our um, message out there, but yeah, I do want to give a quick recognition on the sources that I used to, you know, that we used to put this uh, put this podcast together. I want to give recognition to Jeremy Corbell. Again, he's a UFO researcher. James Fox, he's a documentary filmmaker. And AJ with the Y Files, um, he has great content over there. And these sources help to get certain information, but mainly they helped for, you know, the main reason is, you know, opening your eyes for the possibilities, for the endless possibilities that can be out there. And mainly just keeping an open mind, as you just said. For sure. But other than that, that's it for me. That's good. Same thing, man. I'm glad. And Talk. there's more to come. Yeah, there's more to come. All right. Well, that was it. Uh, it was a good conversation. Good we'll conversation. see you guys on the next one. Uh, Intellects out.